Hi, this is Megan Poff, and I'm the Field Office Chief at the USGS in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'll be talking briefly about how to document a volumetric measurement in SWAMI. Volumetric measurements are used for small flows when the time to fill a container of a known capacity is observed and recorded. Here in Nevada, we have several calibrated containers of different capacities that we use for volumetric measurements, and for this example, I'll be using our 15-gallon container. Before you start the measurement, Make sure the entire volume of flow can be diverted into the container and that there is no leakage around any temporary structures you may have built. Typically, it is easiest to make volumetric measurements with two people, one person responsible for filling the bucket and the other responsible for timing. Please refer to your individual Water Science Center's Quality Assurance Plan for your specific volumetric measurement procedures. Once you are ready to start measuring, select the Discharge Measurement button in SWAMI and then select New Channel to begin. Give your channel a name. Next, click or tap on the drop-down box next to QM Method and select Volumetric. You'll notice that the deployment method of Other has been automatically selected for you when you chose Volumetric as your measurement method. You'll also see that a new box for Units has appeared. I will select gallons for this measurement since I'm using a container that has been calibrated in gallons. But you could also select cubic feet if your container was calibrated in cubic feet. Click measure at the bottom right of the screen. In the main volumetric measurement screen that appears, you will see boxes for start and end volume. At the start of my measurement, the container is empty, so I will fill in zero for start volume. When the container is full, it will contain 15 gallons of water, so I will fill in 15 for end volume. You can either type directly in the boxes, or you can click the calculator icon next to each one to open a numeric keypad and tap the numbers. Remember to click Done in the numeric keypad dialog box if you are using that method of entry. You will notice that the volume difference box is automatically filled out with the total volume of your container. You are now ready to start filling your container and timing. SWAMI has an automatic timer built in for this task, but you can also use your own stopwatch. Let's use SWAMI's built-in timer first. Put the container under the flow of water and tap Start as soon as the water hits the bottom of the container. You can see that the seconds are counting up and that the start button has changed to a stop button. As soon as the container is full, click the stop button. If your filled container time is good, click add to add it to the list below and dump the water out of the container. According to Rance and the USGS TNM 3A8, three or four measurements should be made to ensure error-free and consistent results. Because it is recommended to make multiple container fills, I will make a total of three. Let's do another container fill, and this time we'll use the stopwatch instead of the built-in timer. Put the container under the flow of water. Press the start button on the stopwatch when the water hits the bottom of the container, and press the stop button on the stopwatch when the container is full. To record this measurement, simply click in the white seconds box and type in the time from the stopwatch. Click Add to add your stopwatch time measurement to the list. Had I made a mistake in my timing or data entry, I can right-click if I'm using SWAMI PC or tap and hold if I'm using the PDA version of SWAMI to edit or delete the entry. Let's do one last container fill, and I'll use the built-in timer again. I click Start when the water hits the bottom of the bucket. When the bucket is full, I click Stop, and then I add the measurement to the list box by clicking Add. I now have three container fills entered. Notice that SWAMI has calculated a mean discharge which is displayed at the bottom of the screen. The mean discharge is displayed in cubic feet per second regardless of the units you selected for the volume of your container. Click Done to finalize the discharge measurement. You will see a dialog box that asks if you are sure you want to end. Click Yes. In the channel summary screen that appears, you can now use the drop-down boxes to fill out your channel characteristics. 
I'm measuring at the gauge at this site, which, when I select that, automatically fills in the section distance of zero in the next box. Horizontal flow is even. The channel conditions were gravel, firm, uneven. For velocity description, I'm going to say that my vertical distribution is unknown, since we measure the entire volume of flow with the container. The flow entering my container was steady, so I will select steady for the velocity distribution. Click done when you are satisfied with your channel characteristics. Click done again to return to the main discharge measurement screen. You are now back at the main discharge measurement screen. Fill in the measurement gauge height in the gauge height box and you will see this measurement's percent difference from the rating. As you can see, this measurement was 0.3% off of the staged discharge rating at the station. If there were a shift in place at this site, the shifted queue would be different than the unshifted queue. Click Done. Swami will ask if you want to end the discharge measurement. Assuming you have no more channels to add or subtract to this measurement, click Yes. You are now at the measurement summary screen. Fill out each box. If you don't have the measurement number on hand, click the Auto Sequence box to have Site Visit automatically iterate the measurement for you. I will rate this measurement good since I was measuring the entire volume of flow and the flow did not vary. I chose base flow because this is a typical flow at this site and is not associated with the flood peak. I started at 16.10 and ended at 16.15, so I will fill in those times in the start and end boxes by typing in the numbers. In another video, we talked about clicking on blue start and end times to automatically fill in start and end times. This will not work with volumetric measurements because there is no timestamp other than a count of seconds for each container fill. If I were to try it anyway, Swami will tell me that there are no timestamps in the channel. In the remarks section, it is important to note any container fills that you did not include in Y, as well as any identification on your container, like size or serial number. This is important to help track which measurements were made with what container, just in case the container gets warped in the future or is recalibrated. When you are satisfied with the measurement summary screen, click Done. In the next screen, you have the option of doing a check measurement by clicking New Measurement at the top of the screen, or you may simply click Done to finish measuring. Since this measurement plotted within 0.3% of the rating, no check measurements is necessary. Click Done. You have now completed a volumetric measurement in SWAMI. If you have questions on completing a volumetric measurement in SWAMI, please contact the SWAMI Help Group at the email address shown or visit the FCIS webpage at the address shown.